Hi everyone, my name is Willem Standaert and I'm a professor at HCC Liège and I will talk about virtual meetings and what you should know about them. So actually virtual meetings were the subject of my doctoral dissertation which I conducted at Ghent University under the supervision of Professor Steve Meile and Amit Basu. So while teleworking was already on a rise, uh, these days a lot of people are actually forced to work from home. And uh, so that's because of the corona crisis and the social distancing measures. Now, as a result, people are using a lot more technology to communicate and also for their meetings. Um, so while actually a lot of companies are now not in a good shape, uh, some, there are some exceptions, like uh, the graph that you see in, on the right is from a video conferencing software provider that is actually doing pretty good since January. So. Uh, that is, this is in contrast to most uh, companies on the stock market. So clearly people are using it a lot, but the question is, are they using video conferencing uh, and other technologies in the right way? So first let's take a step back. Uh, so what you see here is a traditional perspective on a business meeting. So you see people coming together in a face-to-face -face setting and they interact for a while on a couple of objectives. So they try to coordinate activities to achieve objectives. So these are what we call the formal functions of a meeting, but there are also informal functions of a meeting, uh, such as building relationships and building the organizational culture. And in fact, business meetings are very, very prevalent in, in business. Um, as, uh, as reports say that managers, managers spend between 60 and 80% of their time in, uh, in meetings, which of course, uh, means that the direct and indirect costs of meetings are very high. So again, it's important to conduct your meetings uh, effectively and especially in virtual settings. Uh, people are, may not be uh, necessarily aware of how to do that. So that's why uh, we conducted this research. Now we did uh, consider some specific technologies and I'll discuss them here uh, in turn. Uh, first one is audio conferencing. So this is where you hear the other people in the meeting. Um, and if you use specific software, you could also have some screen sharing capabilities. Then the next meeting mode, as we call them, is video conferencing. So this is where you can see each other, but usually in a limited way. So you can see what they call talking heads. And again, you can have uh, screen sharing capabilities. And finally, I want to introduce you to a technology that I studied, which is called telepresence. So telepresence is a type of immersive high-end video conferencing where people see each other in true life size. So you see very large screens here on the picture. Um, and there's also directional audio, meaning that you hear the voice from the direction where you see the person. And the meeting rooms are actually designed in such a way that participants for forget after a while that they're not actually physically together. Uh, you see that like uh, the table that continues at the other end, the, the lighting that is adjusted and the, uh, the chairs that are the same. Uh, etc. So it's a very immersive setting, but of course this comes at a significant investment cost, which means that people don't usually have this kind of uh, device at home. But sometimes they do have um, specific screens that are used for video conferencing only, where they have very high definition views on, uh, on the other meeting participants. So here's a, a graph that clearly shows uh, the trade-off uh, when you, you choose a meeting mode. Um, as you can see, uh, you can order them based on both capabilities and costs and the higher the capabilities that you use so the more that you can do in the meeting let's say i will also refer to this as the richness of the meeting mode the higher the cost to use it so obviously the cost of a face-to-face -face meeting can be very low because if people are in the office together that cost is quite low but if it requires travel the cost becomes quite high um, and so the key question to take is how to choose among these meeting modes and of course, when uh, these days, uh, because of social distancing, face-to-face -face meetings are prohibited, uh, the question is really how to understand how to choose among uh, various virtual meeting mode technologies. So again, uh, let me briefly uh, talk about uh, what the theory tells us. So uh, the theory tells us that how meetings, uh, how, how media uh, choices made, made on, uh, on cost, for using a medium, but also access to the medium, urgency, urgency of the situation and some social norms all play a role. But actually the most important factor should be the task or objective that you have for communicating. 
Uh, if we talk about meeting effectiveness, so what we studied is the extent to which the objectives of the meeting are met. And um, this is expected to follow from a match between the capabilities required for the objectives or the tasks at hand and the capabilities offered by the meeting mode. So what we did in the research is fir first develop a list of uh, business meeting objectives. And here they are categorized into four uh, types, uh, as you can see. So it's about exchanging information with different uh, sub type of, uh, of meeting objectives that you can have, like routine or non-routine. Then there's a category of making decisions, uh, which includes also finding a solution and generating buy-in. And then there's communicating sentiments, which includes exchanging opinions, but also exchanging um, emotions or feelings and showing personal concern. And finally, there's a type of objectives, we, which we called building uh, relationships, but it also includes maintaining relationships as well as uh, assembling a team. And so what we did is uh, we went to different companies, uh, four to be exactly, um, and then we, uh, we, we, we did surveys. Uh, so in total, we collected data on over 2,000 real-life business meetings, uh, which we then uh, analyzed for, um, so they were conducted in either audio conferencing, video conferencing, telepresence, or face-to-face. -face. And then we analyzed and compared the effectiveness of these different modes for achieving these objectives. And so this is in an aggregated way and somewhat simplified way uh, what we find. Uh, so what you see here again are the four different uh, categories of objectives and um, the different bars are for the different meeting modes. And so what you see is that for the first category of exchanging information, we found no, di no differences in effectiveness. So in fact, uh, audio conferencing, video conferencing, telepresence and face-to-face -face have the same level of uh, effectiveness for these objectives. But as you know, the cost uh, clearly differs. The, cost, the most cost-effective way to meet in this case is to use audio conferencing. The second one, making decisions, is where we do see differences. And in fact, audio conferencing becomes less effective than the other three meeting modes which are at the same level. Uh, then if we continue with communicating sentiments, we see that audio conferencing becomes uh, an even worse, uh, let's say, mode to use. But still you can use video conferencing, telepresence or high-end video conferencing and face-to-face -face in an effective way. Finally, the fourth category, building relationships. This is where we see that uh, audio conferencing performs even worse, but also video conferencing becomes less effective than telepresence and face-to-face. Uh, now, just uh, as a note here, we did find differences across the different organizations, which can be related mostly to the familiarity and experience of people uh, using technologies, um, as well as, of course, with training that was done at these uh, respective companies. So now we find these differences in uh, effectiveness. We wanted to be able to explain those differences. So. Um, this is a, a graph that, that shows the different concepts here. So we, what we looked at first was the meeting objectives and the meeting modes. So how effective are the modes for the objectives? Now, to be able to explain that, we went through capabilities. As I said before, we look at the capabilities, uh, in this case, required to meet the objectives, but also those supported by the different meeting modes. And as to the letter, uh, this is what it, what it looks like. These are, uh, this is already based on, on some findings where uh, here you see the different meeting modes again, and then the different capabilities that are important in meetings, as we found. Um, so the first one, audio conferencing, supports hearing at attendees voices clearly, and also using a shared computer screen. And the following uh, modes also support these two capabilities. So you can also do this in video conferencing, telepresence, or face-to-face -face meetings. Then if we turn to the, the next two, capabilities, seeing attendees body language and seeing facial expressions, you see that these are supported by video conferencing and the following two meeting modes as well. Finally, experiencing co-location, which is the experience that you get when you kind of feel that you are uh, somewhere together, right? Uh, which is something that you have in telepresence and, and, and also obviously in face-to-face. -face. And finally, observing what attendees are looking at is again something you have in both telepresence and face-to-face -face meetings. Now, important to note here is that um, there is no difference in the uh, important capabilities that are supported by either telepresence or face-to-face, -face, so high-end video conferencing or face-to-face. -face. 
Then to complete our triangle, we looked at the importance of these different capabilities uh, for meeting the objectives. So again, uh, here are some aggregated and simplified uh, findings. But by and large, what we find is that for the first set of objectives of exchanging information, we find only the first two capabilities to be important. So it's only required to, to be able to hear each other and to use a shared computer screen. So these two capabilities remain important for the second set of objectives of making a decision. But in addition, there's a new capability, seeing at then these body language and gestures. So actually what this helps us to understand is why, again, these effectiveness patterns were found. Because uh, actually for the first category of objectives, we found uh, audio conferencing to be sufficient. But then for making decisions, video conferencing becomes more effective than audio conferencing. Then the third type of objectives, communicating sentiments, we see that discerning uh, or seeing facial expressions also become important. So here again, we found actually that audio conferencing becomes uh, a lower in effectiveness, but video conferencing is still at a high level. But finally, by building relationships, this is where we see that high-end video conferencing is required to be effective uh, or face-to-face. -face, and that is because the capabilities uh, of experiencing collocation and observing what attendees are looking at become important. So what are some, some implications or takeaways here is that, yes, uh, we believe, and this our research confirms, that meeting objectives provide a useful basis for choosing how to meet. And what we find is that for many objectives, virtual meeting technologies are quite effective and can be used effectively. And it's not necessarily more is better. Uh, so if you, you want to uh, just exchange inf information, you can just stick to audio conferencing and you should be able to meet effectively. Another pointer is that the current video conferencing software allows you to kind of uh, use capabilities dynamically, which means that you can turn on or off some capabilities. For instance, if you have a meeting, you can definitely open with just uh, seeing people on the screen, right, in kind of a higher uh, definition way. And then if there is some part where you really want to look at details, you can start sharing your screen, but you can also stop sharing your screen again uh, when you want to make decisions, uh, for instance, or communicate opinions about uh, what, you are, uh, what you're discussing. Now, of course, what complicates matters in the current situation is that, um, that some objectives become more prevalent. Uh, so I listed them here, like communicating feelings or emotions, sh showing personal concern, uh, exchanging confidential, private or sensitive information, and resolving conflicts and disagreements. So um, actually, in the meetings that we looked at, so the, the over 2,000 business meetings that we looked at, these object, objectives were not that prevalent. Right? So they were not frequently indicated as being uh, relevant for the meeting at hand. Now, of course, you could expect these objectives to become much more frequent uh, these days, which is, uh, which is actually indicating that richer capabilities should be used because these, cap these objectives fall within the communicating sentiments or building relationships categories of objectives. Okay, the, these were the main takeaways, but I also want to share just some best practices for your virtual meetings, which are also based on, on, on uh, findings that I did or based on the literature review that I did. So first of all, and quite importantly, um, the key success factors for a regular face-to-face -face business meeting still apply or even more so in a virtual setting. So it is important to set an agenda, to share that beforehand so that people can prepare for the meeting. It's important to adhere to your agenda, so follow the different points and keep the time. You can uh, appoint a chair, and especially in virtual meetings, this can, can become very relevant. So someone that keeps the time and the focus uh, and is not necessarily uh, providing too much input or opinion into the actual discussion. So of course, it's, uh, the point is to have your, uh, your meeting focused, but still allow for open communication and wide participation of the different people uh, invited. And it's important to, to make minutes of the meeting such that there is a follow-up in terms of uh, uh, actions, next steps, and uh, responsibilities. As to meeting size, uh, again, the rules apply as in regular face-to-face -face meetings. Uh, such as, you know, inviting only those who have relevant expertise, who have direct responsibility, who must be in on the decision, who are crucial for the implementation, and those that are most affected by the outcomes. Uh, but what did we find in our, in our research is that uh, 
in, uh, in larger meetings, it becomes important to have more capabilities or more capabilities become important. Put differently, if you have a larger meeting, you should use a, a meeting mode with higher capabilities or richer, uh, a richer meeting mode. Also some recommendations because uh, this is what technology allows you to do is to have fluidity in the meeting composition, meaning that you can kind of uh, have people come and go like a revolving door, people coming into the meeting and leaving the meeting, which can be easily done in a, in a virtual meeting. Uh, and there are some technologies, again, that are specifically uh, aiming for such, uh, for such kind of uh, yeah, interaction. And then also a uh, finding or takeaway is that if your meeting becomes too large, actually uh, there's usually not much interaction going on between all participants. So maybe it's even better to record a video or even go for uh, email communication in this, in this uh, instance. As to meeting duration, so we also track that. Uh, here again, we found that longer durations of meetings require richer uh, meeting modes or more capabilities again become more important. So uh, that's what, what the recommendation is about. But there are also other ways to solve this is to build in pauses or split up your longer meetings because people really have a uh, difficulty focusing for a very long time in, in virtual meetings. And in general, it's very important to let the agenda determine uh, duration and not just habit, because we all have the habit of setting one hour meetings or uh, half an hour meetings or, or two hour meetings. But uh, actually, it should be adjusted to what you want to achieve in the meeting and how much time you think is required for uh, achieving that. Then also, um, quite an interesting observation that we did is that hybrid meetings, so these are meetings where not all participants have the same capabilities. Uh, now, these should be avoided. So you see pictures here because this is becoming prevalent as well, is where some people come together face to face and other people might be in video conferencing as shown on a picture on the right, uh, on the left. On the right, you see a picture where there's a, a person on the speakerphone uh, who can also uh, only interact through audio while all other participants are there uh, face to face. So what we found is that this really decreases the effectiveness of the meeting and therefore should be uh, avoided. It becomes worse if the capabilities that, um, um, that are used become more, um, I mean, the, if the difference in capabilities used becomes larger, like in the picture on the right. Uh, but also on the upside, technology could actually be used somehow, maybe sometimes to go beyond being there, as, as we say. Uh, for instance, uh, using specific technology, you can actually go for anonymous input. And if you have people's anonymous, anonymous input, it might be sometimes even more honest. Uh, what we also found is that usually the interaction in virtual meetings is more focused. So in face-to-face -face meetings, people more easily wander off topic, so go off topic. Uh, but also even in virtual meetings, we found that video could be considered a distraction. So if you really just are interacting with someone you know well, uh, that you uh, have, have a relationship with for over multiple years, and you know the, the content well, you might just go for just screen sharing capability uh, and focus on the content because the video sometimes is considered even a distraction. Um, and then and then finally, another upside of virtual meetings is that you can easily record it for people that cannot participate. Um, and, and it's a rich recording, uh, meaning that in a face to face meeting, it's not that easy to to have visual cap, you know, the visual capture of the different participants while in a, a virtual meeting that becomes much more easy. On the flip side, though, it's uh, it's sometimes I mean, something that you cannot do is kind of say things off the record, or at least people have the sense that they uh, are not talking or able to talk off the record. Another point is uh, that uh, what we see is uh, in the current Corona crisis is that there a lot of people organize virtual coffee breaks or virtual happy hours with colleagues and friends. And I think this is something very important. So it's uh, it's good, especially in these difficult times because it helps building the relationship and maintaining those relationships. And it provides a sense of belonging, which again is very important given uh, the isolation that a lot of people are in. Now, I think we have seen this uh, these initiatives a lot in the first few days and weeks. And I think it's very important to keep it going because that's that's maybe also the challenge here. And what can help here is to have some rhythm here and uh, to say we're gonna have a, a virtual coffee 
uh, break every Monday morning at 10 a.m. or let's say even every day we check in on, uh, on each other and do some uh, more informal interaction. And here again, you may want to use uh, the richer, um, richer meeting modes. Finally, a note on virtual reality, because uh, this technology has been mentioned for quite some time as a potential new technology for uh, uh, meetings. Now, of course, uh, kind of uh, a problem here is that people don't necessarily have the devices at home um, or not the same devices or interoperable devices. Uh, but uh, also an issue is that there's, of course, a lack of, um, of using specific cues like uh, facial expressions are, are not, you know, you cannot communicate them through virtual uh, reality. Now, on the, I do believe there is potential for this technology for some specific uh, objectives, such as brainstorming and, and finding, uh, uh, sharing ideas, um, but not for all objectives, certainly not those in the communicating sentiments and building relationships types. And with this note, I would like to end this uh, short session. Um, for sure, do not hesitate if you have questions or comments and you can reach out to me on this email address or through various uh, social media platforms. Thank you for watching.